serious, bro. I don't think there's any better way to spend three hundred dollars. I mean, you could pay the rest of your rent. Maybe you could get some food for the house, but you can do all of those things in virtual reality. Why do you need a house when you can live in your Oculus Quest? Why do you need food when you can play a uh, job simulator and be a chef and make your own food and eat it in there? On a serious note, though, um, I really don't think there's a better way to spend $300 and have this much fun with pretty much anything right now. In my personal opinion, unless you get like a bunch of fireworks and then put them in a bottle and then shoot them out, that's pretty fun too, but still not as fun as this. Today I just want to go over uh, what it's been like to use the Quest so far, uh, if my expectations were met with the new Quest compared to the Quest 1 that I had before this. Before uh, I get into that, I do want to go over a little backstory. Um, so the original Quest, when it was first announced, uh, it was about a year before release. I waited, I waited, I waited, and when it released, I bought it the day after it released. And I used it for about two months solid, like every day, all the time. And after two months, you slow down. And then um, after about two more months after that, I barely ever used it, only maybe for uh, Beat Saber. And it just wasn't getting as much use as I thought it would. Now, this was the original Quest, and uh, I eventually just sold it. So about four months in, I sold the original Quest. And um, a few months ago before the Oculus Quest 2, I had heard about the leaks, the rumors, all of that. And my main thing going into this purchase was... Um, just one thing, I, if I spend $300 on this, I want to get a lot of use out of it. That was like my main thing. I want to get a ton of use out of it and I don't want it to be something that I'll sell in a few months. So backstory over, let's go ahead and get into the video. Alrighty guys. So first things first, I want to talk about these controllers. Now I feel like these didn't get a big enough mention and maybe they did. Maybe I was just too, uh, focused on all the other advancements in the headset, the smaller size resolution blah, 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 all those different things. I really didn't pay the controllers any mind. I don't really care if they came with controllers at all. Like if the headset came by itself, I probably would have still bought it. <laughs> but um, these actually make a huge difference compared to the original Oculus Quest controllers. Uh, and it's all to do with this faceplate and the bigger size. Now this faceplate actually gives you a place to rest your thumb, which I didn't really realize I needed until I had it. Now, when I uh, go back and use the original Oculus uh, Quest controllers, I realized that they are nowhere near as comfortable as these. And I just wanted to give these a mention just in the beginning because they're so much more comfortable than the original Quest controllers, but you won't notice it until you use these. These are amazing. So I remember when the uh, Quest 2 was first getting leaks and there were a ton of people talking about the smaller size and the lighter weight. And to me, yeah, that's all cool. And that's nice. New generation, more powerful, smaller size, smaller weight. But in the grand scheme of things, I really never had an issue with the weight on the Quest 1. So I was thinking, yeah, it'll be smaller, it'll be lighter. That'll just be a plus in addition to all the other things that it has. Now, um, that really didn't make a big difference for me. But what did make a big difference is the Elite strap. Now, compared to the strap that actually comes with the headset, this little jock strap right here, the Elite Strap is a billion times better. It is a must purchase. So if you're thinking about getting a Quest 2, I'm going to have to go ahead and say it just in my personal opinion. I think you should go ahead and get the Elite Strap. Go ahead and bump that price. If you're getting the 64 gigabyte model up to 350, don't even think about it. It's just $300 because you're going to want to get the strap anyway. I played with the strap for like the first week and a half. And if I wasn't having pain right here on the back of my head, I would attempt to readjust the headset and then I would have pain like in my temples or down here like in my cheekbones and it was just uncomfortable. I couldn't comfortably uh, play the game until it died, which was an issue for me considering how much time I spent in the original quest with not that many issues, even without the counterweight that I used on my quest, uh, on my original quest, it was more comfortable than that little jock strap that you get with the quest two. But yeah, in the grand scheme of things, the, the weight reduction, the size reduction doesn't make a really big difference to me uh, as far as comfort goes. But that strap, I would have I would have rather them left the Quest, the original size and original weight and put a better strap on it because that strap is just too uncomfortable. So I wouldn't even consider the Quest 2 to be $300 unless you maybe you have a lot of hair or something and it kind of like uh, I have a bald head in the back. Like it's, it's bald back there. 
So if you're bald in the back, then you definitely can't use that strap. Another thing I wanted to talk about as far as the uh, actual size and fit of the Quest itself, I'm having one small issue. That's the issue. Almost every time I put this thing on, it just snatches my glasses off my face. And it's not like it's super tight when it's actually in the headset. It's not like uh, pinching really hard up against the sides, but it does take them off every time unless I like try like finagle this thing some some special way to get it off. But most of the time I find myself pulling my glasses out of the Oculus Quest and putting them back on my head. It isn't a huge issue. I just wanted to mention it. And if you wear bigger glasses like me, um, you may have this issue. I know that they released the extra facial interfaces uh, that you can buy for like, I think 35 bucks. And I'm actually gonna go and pick those up because I think it may help with that issue for me. But after that, I mean, comfort is 100%. I can play this thing until it dies. And even when I plug my battery bank in, I could get like five or six hours out of this thing and have no problem at all with comfort. So next thing I wanna talk about is the IPD adjustment and the resolution. So when I heard the resolution was going up, like way up, I was excited. I was super excited. Um, uh, that was like one of my main reasons for uh, the purchase. I was so excited about that increased resolution. Um, I gotta say though, the resolution does look really nice. It is improved. Uh, you can definitely tell the difference, uh, especially when you're comparing uh, two different headsets side by side, the Quest 1 and the Quest 2. But I feel like what made a bigger difference for me personally was the reduced screen door effect, not just the actual uh, pixel increase, but the actual reduced screen door effect. It's drastically reduced. Like you can literally barely tell it's there. Like it, it looks so much better than the original Quest. And when I think about uh, people comparing the LCD and the OLED, yeah, you're gonna get deeper blacks on the OLED screen and it's, the color's gonna look more rich, but unless you're comparing those side by side, I notice it's not a big issue. Yes, when I wear the Quest 1 and then the Quest 2 and I uh, start them both up, you can tell that it's not pitch black when you start up and you look at the Oculus logo, you can tell that it's not. But from personal experience playing the, the Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, if you walk into a dark house on this, or the Oculus Quest 1, you're gonna be just as scared. If you're playing Legion, uh, Exorcist Legion, it doesn't matter what you're playing, unless you're constantly using them back and forth and back and forth, you really won't notice the difference, like, especially if you're not uh, specifically looking for it. So I would have to say that I would take the display in this one, LCD over the OLED with the lower pixels and the increased green door effect on the Quest 1. Also, I wanted to talk about the IPD adjustment. Now, initially I had my concerns, I don't know why, I think I have a big head or wide eyes or something. I was like, what if it doesn't, what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? But uh, in all honesty, I can see as clearly as I can on the other one. Now I miss the uh, actual, be actually being able to fine tune it with the dial from the Quest 1. But as far as I've uh, noticed, uh, I don't really, re really have any issues actually seeing everything clearly especially if I adjust it on my head correctly. Yes, I am at the widest setting, which is uh, the three. Facebook, for some reason, decided that they wanted to do away with the manual slider. I don't have any issues with it personally. If you have weird eyes though, you may wanna check with a friend who has a Quest and see if it works, or maybe just order it and return it if it doesn't work for you. Um, that's sad for the people that it doesn't work for. I haven't seen or heard of anybody who has had issues uh, with the uh, three-step IPD adjustment. Uh, it sounds like it's gonna break when you adjust it, but that's pretty much the only issue I've had with it so far. But it's pretty good, especially when you wanna trade out with people who don't really, uh, if you wanna te uh, show people how to use the Quest and they haven't really done VR or anything, it's easier to just snap those little three different uh, positions to get them to realize what's clear. Cause some people don't really understand what you're saying. And then on top of the IPD, you have to adjust the uh, actual tilt of the headset and people just aren't getting the right fit. I feel like this makes it a little bit easier when you're trying to share it with people so that they can have that just, you try at three different steps and tell me what's clearest to you. Instead of that 50 to 60 or 70 something, then you have to go in between and try to find the sweet spot for them when you can't see what they're seeing. So for that, uh, just for that type of instance, I feel like it's a it's a better option, but other than that, doesn't bug me. So the next thing I wanna to touch on is just uh, issues I've been having and things that I've seen over my two week period of using the headset. Now, uh, first thing I wanna talk about is 
I have an issue with my headset personally, which I haven't seen a lot of uh, this issue. If you guys are having this issue, please comment down below and let me know. Um, I can hear my fan all the time. It's constantly running, and I'm going to play a little clip just so you can hear what it sounds like. All right, so right now it's in standby mode, and I'm just going to set the mic right next to the headset and then stick my hand in there so it'll actually uh, come out of standby mode and actually turn the headset back on. Like anytime I turn the headset on, the fan turns on. You can just hear it, hear it, hear it. Now, if you turn up, uh, if you're playing anything through the speakers on the headset, you can't hear it at all. It's really more of a faint sound, but it's definitely noticeable if you're just like at a loading screen or there's no sound coming through the speakers. Uh, this kind of concerns me just a little bit, so I'm going to be returning it and just getting a new one. Uh, I don't think it's a problem with all headsets as, like I said, I haven't seen this issue with anybody else. And another small issue I was having for like the first week, like literally as soon as I got the headset, I could not use the up volume on the headset. And I turned it down perfectly fine, but when I tried to turn it back up, it would not do anything at all. So uh, about for the first week, I had to go into the settings bar and turn it up, which really didn't bug me, wasn't a huge issue. I pretty much leave it at max volume anyway, so I wasn't really too upset about that. But um, maybe a couple of days ago, it finally just started working again. So yeah, I don't know if I got a defective unit or what, but um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna just send it back and get another one just in case, um, you know, just to be sure. So final thing I wanna talk about, and this kind of ties into that little backstory that I went into at the beginning. When I originally got my first Quest, I sold it four months after I bought it. Will I have this issue again with this Quest? And I think the main issue I was having with the original Quest is there just weren't enough titles and time has made it so there's much, much more titles and there are more uh, titles that are in depth. Like The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, I've put like six hours into that game and I'm not even done with it yet. Uh, Population One just came out and that is a game that you can just kill time. I love first person shooters and Battle Royale games and I feel like I'm gonna put I don't know how many thousands of hours into that game, but I'm so excited about it. There's just a ton of different experiences. I wanna go through all of them, but I play like Blast On and all kinds of other stuff. And at the time when I bought the first Oculus Quest, I just think um, they didn't have enough titles at release or even in that four month period that I had it, they didn't have enough titles that were, uh, to me, more than mini games. The only games I really played on there were Beat Saber and uh, Pavlov VR. And Pavlov VR isn't even a uh, in the actual Oculus store, so I don't even think I can count that. But um, as far as this one goes, I don't think I'm gonna have that problem anymore. I think this one will last and last and last. I've been using it for two weeks, and that is what I think about it. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. If you liked the video, please leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. I will be posting more videos. Thank you guys for watching. Take it easy.